Welcome to Admins.com and our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In our last video, we implemented shared services and internet access in a default VRF and we saw some challenges. In this video, we're just going to repeat the same scenarios, but this time place these services in the VRF and see how that might be different. For our physical lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8, and one switch, switch one with R2, 3, 4, and 5, which pretty much makes up our core MPLS connected over a serial point to point links, while the other router and switch are connected across the layer 2 VLANs. For our layer 3 topology here in the middle, we have our core MPLS with the three PE routers, R1, R2, R4, and two P routers, R3 and R5. And we have also already configured some of the MPLS customer, C1 and C2, with the customer VRF C1 on site 1 and 4, and the customer VRF C2 on site 2. Okay, so site 3 is going to be dedicated to a provider network with the provider VRF that we're going to be configuring to provide shared services. This is being simulated by a loopback 10 on switch 1, as well as the internet access that we are being simulated by the loopback 42. As I mentioned, this video is pretty much a repeat of our previous lab video, so scenarios and everything will be pretty much identical. But just in case you guys didn't get a chance to watch our previous video, the one with no VRF, then let's go through the scenario one more time. So here, there is a shared services subnet on switch 1, which we say is going to be switch 1 lead back 10 that needs to be accessed by multiple customer sites. So that will be site 1, 2, and 4. So for configuration task number 1 with shared services, we need to place site 3 under a VRF name provider with a route distinguisher of 300 colon 300. And then we need to configure R4 and switch 1 to allow R6, R7, and R8 to access switch 1 loopback 10 from their loopback 10 through 12. Okay, here we are allowed to use only one new route target, 300, 300. We are allowed to use static routes. And since there's no address overlapping between all of our VPN sites, the shared services must be accessed using the site true or no NAT IP. Okay, so basically what we're going to be configuring is our VRF and site 3 over here. I'm going to change that. And we're going to allow this site 1, 2, and 4 to access the switch 1 loopback 10. And as you might have realized already, this is very similar to an extranet scenario with our provider VRF being the extranet network that needs to be accessed by all of the other VRFs. So applying the same methodology, we're going to be playing around with a route target. So here with the provider VRF with the route target, we're going to export. So RT export, we say we can use the new route target 300 300 so that we can have all the other sites import that particular route target. So for each of these PE router, we need to do a import to learn the shared services network routes. So import 300, 300. That's going to be true for all of these VRF. Okay, and at the same time, the R4 needs to know how to wrap back to each of these subnets. So at the same time, R4 or the VRF a provider VRF needs to import all of the site's routes using the route target or export route target for each of these. So for our customer C1, we're using the export route target of 100 and 100, and for C2, it's 200, 200. So for our VFF provider, we have to do an import of 100, 100, as well as the import of, let me just do comma, 200, 200. Okay, so that's what's the configuration is going to look like. And on R4, we also going to need a static routes. Since we're currently not running any dynamic routing PECE protocols, we're just going to keep it simple, use static routes to point to switch one for the shared services subnet. And for the other direction, the switch one also needs to know how to get to all of these remote sites. So we're going to need a static route pointing in the opposite direction as well for the return traffic. Let's start with the configuration on switch one with the static routes. Here on switch one, we do IP route. First is the R6 loopback, 10 through 12. We know it starts with 66, so we can just do a slash 16 on that. And the next hop is going to be the R4 fast 00, and that would be dot 104.4. Then we'll just call R6. 
The next one's going to be for R7. We're just going to update the first two octet. So 7.7 .7 and then also for R8. Okay, so 8.8. .8. Next, we're going to configure or create a VRF provider on R4. So do IP VRF provider all in caps. Route target. We set export of 300, 300 for the, of the remote sites to import that route target. And then we also need to import all of the remote sites routes. So import 100, 100, and then also 200, 200 for the VRFC2. Okay, then we said we need an IP route, VRF. Since we're dealing with a provider VRF, the IP route has to be part of that VRF. And this is for the share service subnet on the switch one uh, loopback 10 slash 24 pointing to switch one next top IP 104.10. We just name it service. Then don't forget that once we have the static route configured, we need to redistribute that to BGP so that route can be advertised to all of the remote sites. Okay, so router BGP 100, address IPv4 VRF provider. So we're doing the redistribution. And it looks like we forgot to configure route distinguisher on the provider VRF. So let's take care of that real quick. 300, 300. Okay, and then we do a redistribute static. Okay, now. On R4, we just show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all. Oh, let's see what kind of routes we're seeing. I think we might forgot to add this interface to be a member of that VRF as well. Looks like we did forget. So here on the FAST00, we need to add that to the VRF. Okay, so IP, VRF forwarding, provider. That's why we didn't see any route just now. Then put the IP back in. Make sure we can do a ping VRF provider to the next hop of 1.16.104.10. Okay. Now let's do show IP BGP VPN V4 all one more time. Okay, there you go. We see a lot more routes. So here with our VRF provider, we have that static route being redistributed already, as well as we are also learning the R6, R7, and R8 routes with the corresponding route distin distinguisher. That should be it for R4 at this point. Next, we're gonna go over to R1 and then configure the route target import. So the R1 will be learning the switch one loopback 10 routes. So IP VRF C1. So R1, just to show you IP, show IP VRF, R1 contains two VRFs for C1 and C2. So under v, IP VRF C1, we're going to do a route target import 300, 300. Okay, same with C2 import 300. Then if you just show IP BGP VPN V4 all. We see that for both VRF, here we have the subnet 10.10.0.0.24. Okay, now let's complete the same thing on R2. So IP VRF C1 and then route target import 300.300. Okay, go to second, you show IP BGP VPN V4 all. And here we are still learning 10.10.0.0.24. Now to give it a quick test from our CE routers, start with site one, which is R6. Show PBGP, we see that route's in there. So we're trying to ping 10, 10, 0, 1, sourcing from loopback 10. You can see that is going through. Okay, next is R7. Do a ping, that's working. And finally, R8. So do a ping, and you can see that it is working as well. Okay, so now that we have verified reachability from all of the three sites to switch one loopback, and that's pretty much complete our task number one.